No, my name is not Tyler Hoover. I have not got a problem buying, well, no, I absolutely have a problem buying cars, but I don't have Tyler's problem. This is not my car, but on fleet this time, we're gonna be doing a radiator on my friend's 944. So what actually is it? This is a 1985 2.5 litre, four cylinder, eight valve 944. It's about 150 brake from the factory, but it dynoed at about 140, which for a car that's 34 years old, really isn't too bad, but it is leaking a bit of water. So we're gonna put a new radiator in it. Nice big aluminium core. And when trying to find this, this was literally the only one available in Europe. One of the main reasons we're doing this is because we still haven't got parts for any of our other cars because this one's been a bit of a mess. Before we can pull the radiator out, we've got to pop the bottom hose off and drain the system. We just unbolt this really nice aluminium under tray from the bottom of the car, which actually came off without any problem. Now we've got the cover off, had a look underneath, and there is a lot of goo all around the sump here, so we're going to have to clean that off and keep an eye on it to see where that might be leaking from. But in the meantime, we can get into this pipe and we can start draining. If I can find where I've put the quarter inch, there it is. So we get this off and uh, and I put those down for a minute because I'm probably going to get covered in water if this goes right. better than expected but it didn't go well. Now one of the best things about the 944 is obviously the pop-up headlights. However one of the worst things about working on the front of this car is the pop-up headlights because the whole mechanism runs across the top of the radiator or just behind it which means we're having to work around it because we really don't want to disassemble all of this headlights because these work. Damn boy. And we don't want it to not work because that would be really, really bad. So we had to remove an awful lot more. We've got rid of the airbox and everything else we possibly could around here. We even took the math off because we couldn't get the airbox off the math easily because there's a bolt tucked right down in the corner. You can't really get a tool on. So it was easier just to undo this Jubilee clip. You can see an awful lot more of the car. There's a massive great elbow engine mount down here and we can get into the four bolts that hold this radiator on. So I'm just taking the last one out now. So once they're out, you actually can't easily get the radiator up because the belts are in the way, the pulleys are in the way. So it's a lot easier to just snip a couple of the zip ties and send the whole fan assembly down to the floor. So in case you're using this as an instructional video on how maybe not to change a radiator in a 944, these are the four bolts that hold the fan shroud on. And this is the way it sits in the car. So this is your top entry hose, which we took off over here and comes out of the center of the block. Well, the center of top of the block, which actually has a little bleed valve, which is going to make life an awful lot easier when we have to fill this back up. So now we just need to get the old one of these out, slot this one back in and rebuild it. Now you're going to come on a bit of a journey with me here because I'm not sure whether these two bolts actually release the radiator, but I can't really find anything else which might and it certainly matches up with things that it holds in place on the new radiator. So we'll see what happens when these come off. So those two bolts hold in these two little rubber stops. They go through holes here and they pinch down on the top of the radiator. And one of the things we can tell from this radiator immediately is that this wasn't removed very well when the orange was put on the front of the car because this is a bit tinted. Getting it out past this distributor might be tricky so I think we'll just take the distributor off. Actually as we've got this up in the air we might be able to get it down through the bottom. So this just lifts out of the two rubber pins and with a bit of finagling yep this drops out through the bottom. Like that. So this is the old radiator. As you can see, it's still leaking water over me, um, but it obviously got caught when the rest of it was done, but it is in pretty bad condition. Like there are, these are all fins that are just crumbling off the top layer. This is 
surprisingly bad. Um, the inside isn't too bad. It's still holding reasonably well, but this has obviously taken some pretty bad knocks in, the, in its time. Now, the last thing we need out of this is this little sensor, because our new radiator doesn't have one. So we spin this out, put it into the new one, and then rebuild. Now, to get this out, you want a 28 mil deep socket. But I suspect very few people have that. But it's not that tight in because it's just going into plastic. Channel locks are very, very capable. And it should, unless yours is really knackered, just spin out like that. There's another job we're going to do while we've got the coolant system so far apart. With the rad out and the coolant all drained, we can easily get into the thermostat housing down here. Now at the moment, the car is presenting a typical thermostat problem. It's wide open and it's keeping the engine too cool. So it's never really getting up to temperature fully. Hopefully, pop this hose off, remove a circlip, pop the new thermostat in, rebuild, and everything else goes back on. <laughs> How you feeling there, Aid? Bollocks. It's only going to get worse at this point. Right. So this is our old thermostat. We took the circlip off, and there's this little washer that sits over the seal to protect it. The seal itself is, isn't in great condition anymore, it's a bit loose. Our new one has a much better feeling seal, and it's the same outside diameter. We just put that back on with the washer and a new circlip over the top to hold it all in place. Now one very important thing that we forgot to do when reassembling this was put the radiator shroud back on because at the moment you can't get to one of the fan bolts at all because it's right up underneath this bracket under here round and you can't see where it engages and you can't really do anything about it which is one of the single most awkward things I have found for such an easy bolt well it would have been easy if we'd not forgotten about it so we have to take a few bits back off put the fan shroud on and then put it all back together again for maybe the third or fourth time we just throw it all back together that's it, everything back together again. Now we just need to fill it up. Now it looks like the tank is all the way up to the level, but on this one, there is a little bleed valve right here. If I undo it, loads of pressure comes out and the level drops in the tank. So we can try and get as much into the system as possible without actually turning the engine over. So we started it up and there is still a leak. Or at least there is a brand spanking new leak because we didn't do what one of the Jubilee clips properly. It's slightly off center and it's letting out a load of water underneath the engine. So I'm just going to spin this back off, reposition it, tighten it back up and try again. And that's a successful thermostat and radiator done. And it would have been a lot faster if it hadn't been for this. This circlip cost us about an hour and a half because we put it in thermostat rattled around and we realized we'd forgotten to put a rubber o-ring in which is a slightly different set fitment from the original thermostat. If we hadn't done that we'd have been done way faster but instead we had to seat this twice well not this one twice but the other one twice and then put everything back together and this still, we still found a tiny little leak but that's pretty much solved so it's all good. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of a car not in our fleet on Pedalbox Fleet and we'll probably see this again because it still needs a bit more work. Ah!